Hi guys, welcome to this next video where we're looking at INAV tuning. Once again, joining me is Mark Hoffman. Hi, Mark. Yeah. Hi, Darren. Looking forward to the next video. <laughs> I, I, I like doing this because it always catches them out when Steve does it. A wing talk is just funny. <laughs> <laughs> In the last video, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up in the top corner. Um, we were talking about what the PIFF controller actually does and how it works to try and keep the airplane at the attitude that you want. Um, we mentioned set point, which is really quite important. But today, what we're going to have a look at is how flight modes, and in particular angle and altitude hold, work with the PIFF controller and why they're quite important and how to get them uh, tuned, I guess. So Mark, where, where do we want to start? Yeah, so in the last video, we already mentioned that the PIFF controller is the most, most important controller in INAF that do all the attitude control of INAF and of the uh, actual airplane. And the angle mode is also not just a simple keep the plane level mode, it's basically outputting control signals to the PIFF controller. So the PIFF controller is still active to keep the plane at the desired attitude. And that's a really important point to understand how to tune it well. So uh, here on my screen, you see the uh, PID tuning page. That's also the PIFF tuning page uh, in the case of fixed ring. And here we have one single value to tune the angle mode. And this is the uh, level P controller. In the PIFF, we have the proportional integral and feed forward. On quads, you have uh, the proportional integral and derivative. But here we only have a proportional value. And what it actually does is it uses the artificial horizon data. And uh, based on the artificial horizon, that's the determined by the accelerometer of the airplane, looking where the ground is or where the gravity points at, to calculate at what angle on each specific axis the plane is actually positioned at. So if it flies level or if it's pitched up or down or row to the left or to the right. And the angle controller basically does a very simple thing. If your desired attitude is a zero pitch, zero roll for a level flight, and you have some kind of deviation of that, like five degrees to the left, it will just output a set point command to the roll axis to roll back to the right. So at this point, the PIFF controller will do all the attitude change to bring the plane back into the desired attitude. And then the level controller will just go back to zero with the set point value. So everything goes through the PIFF controller set point at this point. Okay, cool. Just to mention why angle is quite important is because all the navigation modes are actually built on top of angle. So if we get angle flying well, the, the rest of the navigation is going to have a really good head start. Yes, exactly. If you have uh, additional navigation modes like return to home, 3D cruise, mission waypoints, whatever, everything is going first to the uh, angle controller that uh, makes sure the plane is at the desired attitude to fly into the direction that is uh, requested. And then this one is again outputting a set point command to the PIFF controller. We also have some more values here. We have like the LPF cutoff, that's the low pass filter cutoff frequency for the uh, angle mode. This is usually only used if you have like, let's say you have some jitter on your sticks uh, to avoid constant set point changes uh, in the output signal and uh, keeping the plane a little bit smoother. You can, in theory, also lower that value a little bit for a very big and very gentle planes to have some smoother flying, but in general, the uh, five hertz default is uh, pretty fine here and shouldn't, need, shouldn't actually need any changes. You can play around with it if you want uh, during your tuning phase, if the PIFF controller is tuned well already. And the transition is for Horizon, Mr. Schlesinger's favorite flight mode. So yes, exactly. I actually know this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is how much stick deflection 
between transitioning from horizon or angle mode in the middle to acro at the extremes. So with the default 75, it's going to be 75 of a move percent of the movement from the center out is angle mode. And then after that will be angle mode. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but keep in mind, if you have your transition at 75%, don't get uh, don't take my word for 100 percent here uh, but i think uh, the maximum angle the uh, bank angle that is set in enough is scaled down to this horizon transition point so let's say you have a 45 degree uh, maximum angle you can set that up here in the rates uh, area for the max roll and max pitch angle and let's say we have 45 degrees here and uh, you go with your stick at a full deflection, the plane will bank 45 degrees in angle mode, but in horizon mode, uh, at 75% of the stick travel, the plane will reach the 45 degree bank angle already, and then transition into acro mode if you go further. So if you lower this transition uh, horizon value, let's say down to 10%, uh, the plane will be hardly controllable maybe, and uh, will uh, bank pretty strongly already if you go to just 10% uh, stick input and then directly move into acro mode. So in, in other words, just avoid horizon, it's the devil's mode. <laughs> just use angle and acro, <laughs> at least you, it's predictable. <laughs> basically, yes. I had, I had an idea recently uh, where it could be useful because I know some people uh, that came over from uh, autoplane like to have this but they have some kind of manual mode that is also self-leveling so at the slightest stick deflection you fly like in acro or in manual mode but as soon as you release the stick you go back so you could in theory uh, emulate that by setting the transition to maybe five or ten percent and then also put the bank angle of the plane the maximum bank angle just to ten percent but in this case you won't be able to use navigation modes properly anymore because they won't work well in 10 degree bank angles uh, be very very slow to ma navigate <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah basically careful with this maybe just leave it on default you can play around with it but do it on a plane you uh yeah you're not afraid of losing <laughs> <laughs> okay so this this is angle explained quite well it's 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 quite simple um is it, you know, it's controlling the plane now. It's putting, it's doing the set point instead of your transmitter. Um, but what if we want to stick at a certain altitude? If we let go, rather than just relying on the horizon or the accelerometer, what if we just want to maintain an altitude? There's a mode for that. So uh, how does this then affect the, the PIFF controller, Mark? So uh, for altitude hold, we have our position Z controller. So we have the X axis, that's the uh, axis from left to right, if I remember correctly. We have the Y axis, that's the axis from front to back. And we have the Z, Z axis from button up. And the position Z controller is used to maintain a specific altitude in INAV. And what it actually does is it works with a standard PID controller, proportional integral derivative, and it will output a control signal based on the altitude deviation. So if your altitude is lower than the set point altitude, so we don't only have a set point for your rates, you also have a set point for your angle and for your altitude. And uh, if you have a deviation here, it will output a control signal to the attitude controller for angle. And this one then will calculate the desired rate set point to the PI. Uh, FF controller to change the attitude of the plane to pitch up or down to correct the altitude and fly in a straight line again. Just uh, because we haven't really covered derivative, it's it's a different system to the P and the I because it's uh, it actually sort of predicts what's going to happen uh, as far as I understand it. The, the feed forward is obviously tied to the inputs the set point um, but the derivative is looking at what you want to happen and predicting what's going to happen in the future and then trying to meet that target is that correct uh, yes basically it's 
it's not looking into the future but it's estimating how fast or how long it would take until we reach our uh, desired target in this case the altitude target um Darren, i think we can uh, also link another video i found on youtube from a channel named bb bps space uh, that's a guy who builds uh, guided rockets uh, by himself uh, as a hobby and also as a business and he has a presentation about how a PID controller works and that's the best explanation I ever heard uh, about that and really helps to understand it even more. So we talked about the P already that's outputting a control signal linear to the error. We have the integral that sums up the error to push back and stay as precisely as possible on the target and we have the derivative that actually looks how fast the error gets reduced and uh, the, the faster the approach will be the more it will fight against the uh, proportional output to dampen and uh, avoid overshooting yeah that sounds understandable <laughs> it's, that's the thing i think it's a lot of this sort of looks quite intimidating but when you break it down it's actually not too difficult to understand i think we've got a fairly decent grasp now of how angle works how it and how altitude hold locks onto a target but should we be using this to fix maybe dolphining or is there better ways of doing it so um we should always work the chain backwards when it comes to any problems in the plane attitude altitude control for example so backwards means First of all, we have to make sure the PIFF controller is tuned well, because that's the uh, last point or the last station in the whole control chain. We have the attitude controller that out outputs to the attitude controller that outputs to the PIFF controller. So PIFF is the first thing we have to look at. And even that dolphining thing uh, is usually, as we discovered later after some uh, troubleshooting and log analyzing, the uh, dolphining was mainly because of too high rates and too low feed forward values of the plane. So the I term was winding up all the time and causing these dolphining oscillations. If that does not help, you can try to lower or raise, raise the uh, attitude uh, controller P value or the level P value to make sure the plane is either pushed harder into the level flight to maintain its altitude or it is controlled softer and not as aggressive to uh, have smoother altitude control and only if that does not work and of course the board pitch alignment is already tuned well so the plane maintains level basically by itself in angle mode already then at the last resort we can look at the position z controller and then maybe lower the derivative um, if the plane struggles to find its target position or the p value if it continuously overshoots the target altitude is it not also a good idea to look back even further so if, if we have the dolphining issue in this example you you say go back to the very start but the very start is the control surfaces so maybe just double checking that everything there is working smoothly as well but the servo is centering well and physical things before trying to fix it with the piff controller and internal rnav stuff yes absolutely of course uh, all we discuss here is just uh, covering the inav internal stuff um it the first thing should be the plane has to fly well in manual mode with with uh, out the flight controller with uh, by getting everything out of the equations like you fly in manual mode and if you have any issues with trimming up or down or uh, yeah vi very strong vibrations or flattering at high speeds and all that stuff this should always be fixed beforehand so as i said in the last video a bad plane will fly a good plane will fly even better all right cool so unless there's something else you'd like to add mark i think that's probably a good place to leave this video um we we've basically got a good understanding now of how angle works and how the altitude's held 
and through understanding those we can get a we have an overview of how all the other navigation modes work so maybe we should end this here and then come back and look at actually tuning something uh what do you think yeah that's a good plan from from my side um i have nothing more to add if there are more questions just uh, leave a comment uh, i will definitely watch these videos too and uh, see if i can answer anything and of course you can always find us in the ina fixed stream group of on facebook yeah, I think there's a link in the description to the INAP fixed wing group. If not, I'll make sure there is. Um, it's always a very good place to actually go and get help. It. Even if it's not Mark or myself or uh, Steve or any of the other moderators, uh, not that we're moderators, uh, if it's, uh, there's plenty of knowledgeable people in that group. So you, you'll always get some help there. Um, but thank you again, Mark, for this video. Um, we'll see you on the next one i guess um where we actually look into how to start tuning your plane and getting it flying superbly because of course you've tuned it in manual and it's all trimmed out nicely so um thank you mark yeah you're welcome darren and see you in the next one yeah see you in the next one thank you guys don't forget like subscribe all, all those things help get this video out to more people and at the end of the day that's what we want to do is help other people in this hobby so liking and subscribing the bell icon all help to push it to more people so they can learn about all this stuff too so thank you guys see you on the next one bye